well, thank you for having me. This was a really interesting um, presentation to put together because so much of what we've been looking at at the Sacandaga for the past several years due to the creation of the documentary is what was there before and what happened when the Conklinville Dam was completed and not so much, um, you know, the more recent history because I think a lot of people feel like, well, we know that, right? We are experiencing it. But I actually learned quite a few things um, while putting together this presentation. Um, so uh, this is just the title slide, but I loved this image of the Pines Hotel. This was before the creation of the reservoir, but it's one of the many hotels that existed even after um, the valley was flooded. So you can kind of get that sort of grand Adirondack hotel feel from this image. So um, the Congreville Dam was completed in 1930. This is an image of the valley uh, during the flooding. Um, it was completed the same year as the Chrysler Building in New York City. And the country was entering its second year of the Great Depression. And as New York State planned to construct the Sacandaga Reservoir, the boundaries of the water, which we call the taking line, would drown several small villages and hamlets, family farms, businesses, uh, and miles of railroad tracks belonging to the FJ and G Railroad. So some families moved their homes literally uh, to other lots above the new shoreline. Um, others watched as their houses were dismantled or burned by work crews preparing the valley for flooding. And the creation of the reservoir really meant an end of a way of life that had existed in the valley for generations. Um, this is just an image of a family. Uh, I think this is in Bachelorville, actually, so not technically Fulton County, uh, gathering their belongings for um, for moving out of their house. So. Uh, the Sacandaga res res Reservoir, there we go, as we know it today, uh, seen here, is a huge man-made body of water. We know it's nestled in the foothills of the Adirondacks, just inside the uh, Adirondack Park, surrounded by forest and stunning scenery. And naturally, its creation led Fulton County's movers and shakers to understand that here was an opportunity to develop the region as a tourist destination. Uh, it had been once in the days of the Sacandaga Park, uh, which was owned and operated by the FJ&G. And the park drew tens of thousands of people each year, earning it the nickname the Coney Island of the North. Now there would be new life here as the county set about promoting its new gem as a playground for all seasons. So as the reservoir filled, the depression raged on uh, throughout the country, 1929-1930. Uh, President Roosevelt's New Deal resulted in the creation of several public relief programs, including the Civilian Conservation Corps. And we have some uh, propaganda, I guess, here for the CCC. Uh, that was established in 1933, and the CCC was a volunteer program for unemployed, unmarried men between the ages of 17 and 28. The CCC provided jobs relating to conservation and development of natural resources in rural lands owned by federal, state, and local governments. Um, a group of men from the CCC were actually brought up to the Sacandaga to work on improving campsites along the waterfront. This was in Wells. So again, we're stepping a little bit outside of that Fulton County boundary, but it's all right. Um, they improved campsites and other facilities um, with the hopes that they would be able to draw more tourists to the area. Uh, but as we see, as we go through tonight, these were ongoing issues that would come up for decades and even still today, I think we're, we're talking about them and dealing with them, so. Um, probably the most obvious benefit of the Sacandaga was its allure as a brand new fishing spot. Um, in June 1931, the Fulton County clerk reported that they were issuing a record number of fishing licenses, um, 300 more than previous years to date that year. Uh, as home to large and smallmouth bass, walleye, and northern pike, fishermen flocked to the lake with the hopes of having a new fishing tail. Uh, perhaps maybe to tell later that evening at the bar. Uh, but it was Peter Dubuck who earned that honor in um, when he caught a, a country countrywide record-breaking pike on September 15, 1940. Uh, it was a 46-pound, 2-ounce, 
52 and a half inch long pike, uh, and it remains a U.S. record still today. Dubuck owned and operated a commercial fishing guide service out of his Sacandaga home, so he was also part of that tourism industry, and he spent nearly every day on the water. Unfortunately, there is no existing photograph of that world record pike. Um, you, we have two images of him here holding some pike, but it's not the world record. Uh, but if you come to the museum, you can see a replica, uh, as you, we pictured there on the right-hand side. Um, rather than having the fish stuffed and mounted for $54, which is a price that he considered exorbitant, um, Dubuck gave the fish to his friends to eat. And he also caught the New York State record largemouth bass earlier that year. Um, unfortunately, he died in 1980, but he was inducted into the Fulton County Baseball uh, and Sports Hall of Fame in 2015. And there are two replicas, as I mentioned. We have one at the museum, uh, and it was made using the dimensions and weight that he gave uh, for the world record recording. And um, there are two historic markers on the lakefront um, memorializing, I guess, this moment, one on this side of the lake, on the Fulton County side, and uh, one on the other side as well. Ensuring the lake was well stocked with fish has been an ongoing concern. Um, in 1976, the DEC gave a report on the declining fish population of the lake, and a well stocked lake and improved fishery would promote uh, would provide a multi million dollar boost to the area's tourism focused economy. The following year, a study on fishing and its impact on tourism found that lack of food and changing water levels were affecting the spawn season, which made natural growth in and around the lake unstable. Um, because this is a reservoir, the water is being raised and lowered as needed. There was no real sense of regularity for the wildlife to really thrive as it would in a naturally occurring lake. Um, the report also cited the need for increased access to the lake and more accommodations in the immediate area. Today, we have four boat launches maintained by the DEC, three in um, Fulton County in Broadalbin, Northampton, and Northville, and one in Hadley in Saratoga County. Uh, in 1984, the Great Sacandaga Lake Fisheries Federation, or the GSLFF, was established uh, by various fish and game clubs around the lake. And the GSLFF is a nonprofit dedicated to the preservation of the fishery of the Great Sacandaga Lake. Uh, between 84 and 88, they stocked over 500,000 smelts as forage fish in the Sacandaga that they caught in Indian Lake and transported down here. Uh, the DEC then issued a permit for rainbow and brown trout, and stockings have been held annually each spring since 1989. So in addition to events and fundraising that the GSLFF does, um, the organization also receives support from the Great Sacandaga Lake Advisory Council, Saratoga and Fulton Counties, towns around the lake, various legislative grants, fish and game clubs, and local businesses. Um, indicating that a well-stocked lake continues to be an important part of our area's tourism economy. Um, for example, we have the annual walleye challenge, which is organized by the chamber every year and draws thousands of people from the air, uh, from to the area each February. Uh, in 2018, they had 1,750 registered fishermen and 54% of them were from outside Fulton County, uh, representing 11 different states. It really is a big draw. Um, of course, in recent years, we've had unseasonably warm weather, which has caused issues with the tournament due to lack of ice on the lake. It was originally held in January and has been pushed back to February now to hopefully try and uh, combat that issue. But um, these are just a couple of pictures of some of the fish stockings that they do. Uh, I have a couple slides here of sort of the transition period. The uh, bridge on the left is the new bridge that was built into Northville uh, when the lake was created. And then you can see the original bridge down on the right-hand side. But I included this image because the um, building in this photograph was a hotel. So tourism was always around here. 
Um, and then this is just a, a, vis, um, a vision of the other side of the bridges, but I just thought that was really neat uh, and wanted to include those. So um, as we touched upon very briefly, the Valley was a thriving tourist destination prior to the reservoir's creation. Um, grand hotels and resorts catered to visitors who wanted a vacation from everyday stresses and city life. Um, the High Rock Lodge was an example of these. This was built on property once belonging to the Houseman Farm in the 1890s, and it was originally operated as a farmhouse inn, which was um, a common sort of place where you could go in the Adirondacks where you had this kind of combination of resort and working farm. So they boasted, you know, farm fresh food and all kinds of stuff brought right to the table, kind of like our farm to table restaurants um, today that people are really keen on. Um, but eventually the lodge grew to be a 90 room hotel overlooking the Sacandaga Valley. And even after the creation of the reservoir, it remained a popular vacation destination for visitors who wanted to enjoy the changing activities that the lake afforded. Um, the Dawes family purchased the High Rock in 1942 and added a 10-room motel onto the property. Uh, unfortunately, in 1951, a fire destroyed the lodge and Mildred converted the cottage into a restaurant and bar. At that point, the property was used mostly to house actors from the Sacandaga Summer Theater. And in fact, Anthony Brady Farrell, who was the producer for the Summer Theater program, purchased High Rock Lodge in 1956 and used it as a training facility for the actors. Uh, eventually, the original buildings were destroyed and the property was sold. Uh, and now there is a private residence on that property. So speaking of the Sacandaga Summer Theater. Um, the, the Rustic Theater at Sacandaga Park was built in the late 1800s, and you can see it's in the Adirondack style, you know, wood beams and very woodsy looking. Uh, it hosted musical performers and live entertainment, as well as Sunday church services in the summer and school plays. Um, some of the most notable performers included John Philip Sousa, Eddie Cantor, W.C. Fields, and Al Jolson. The rustic was above the taking line and did survive the flooding, and it continued to serve as a venue for live entertainment and theatrical productions through the 1940s and 50s. But unfortunately, being made of wood and having all those pine trees around and pine needles falling on your roof, it was very flammable. And in July 1955, the theater burned to the ground. Uh, but there was a new opportunity here. That fall, the Sacandaga Summer Theater was established, and they built a new theater of metal, <laughs> and that it could fit over 1,000 people. Um, they hired Anthony Farrell, who was a well-known producer responsible for big New York Broadway productions. And he brought on a composer and director named Samuel Levine. And Paul Barnes, who was a scenic designer for NBC. So there were some big names uh, operating the Sacandaga Summer Theater. Famous actors and actresses of the day starred in shows for runs that lasted several weeks. So you could hop in your car, drive up to Northville, and you could see Tallulah Bankhead or Groucho Marx or Charlton Heston or Walter Matthau. There were many of them. Um, some of the productions were Guys and or South Pacific, very popular shows at the time. Um, the season's playbill covers were designed by syndicated cartoonist and Northville resident Mel Graff. So you can see an example of one of the playbills on the left side there. And the big name stars and popular shows did bring some crowds to the Sacandaga. And of course, the performers, crew, directors, various other people involved in the production would need accommodations, would need places to eat and stay. Um, unfortunately, the Sacandaga Summer Theater did not last long. Farrell negotiated out of his contract early due to illness, and the company never seemed to recover after that. Um, there was a short 1962 season that was produced by Schaefer Montanino Milling Theatrical Productions, um, and they did West Side Story, Anything Goes, um, and Gypsy, as well as a couple of other shows. But for the remainder of the decade, the theater shareholders tried to find a suitable producer, but they didn't have much luck. And in 1970, the theater was auctioned off and demolished. 
Um, the end of the theater really resulted from financial problems as many things come to an end because of that as well. Um, it was too large and too costly for the community and the times. Uh, typically, the operational costs were borne by the producer, and after Farrell withdrew in 1960, the theater lost not only his connections in the entertainment world, but also the funds required to plan, finance, and produce a full season. But despite the failure of the Sakandaga Summer Theater, the post-World War II boom, which was also called the Golden Age of Capitalism, bolstered the nation's economy. The GI Bill financed a well-educated workforce, contributing to a growing middle class. Um, increased productivity and automation brought more consumer goods to the market at a lower cost. Cars became more available. I wanted to include, I love old car ads, so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to include some of those. And you can see uh, they are advertising that you can do anything in your car. You can drive in the city and you can drive out on adventure. Um, families moved to the suburbs. They relied less on public transportation. And the creation of the interstate and the Adirondack Northway provided easier, safer, and better routes for travelers. Cars meant new personal found freedom and enjoyment for Americans. And as people gained more leisure time, tourism expanded and created a demand for more service stations, motels, restaurants, and visitor attractions. Uh, unfortunately, as we know, these advances also had negative impacts. Many small towns and rural areas were bypassed by the new interstate, uh, contributing to the decline of some of these cities. Um, Route 30, I believe, actually used to go through Northville itself, um, but no longer does. Uh, so uh, the Adirondack region was not immune <laughs> to the changes that accompanied this economic upswing in post-war America. Where boarding houses were once popular, the hotel and motel industry started to take over. Um, fortunately for our area, the Northway brought huge numbers of travelers to the Adirondacks. And the Sacandaga, things were shifting as well. In January 1952, the FJ&G Railroad sold the Sacandaga Park to Adirondack Properties, uh, which was an organization whose principal stockholders were Florida residents. Um, reporting on the sale, the Morning Herald's paper read, construction of the Sacandaga Reservoir in 1930 wiped out the park as an amusement center, but established it as an excellent resort center with its greatly enlarged beach facilities. Since the amusement area was removed, the railroad had operated the park as a resort center, which it advertised would provide every facility for rest and relaxation, sports, comfort, entertainment, and wholesome outdoor life. Um, the Adirondack Properties' ownership of the park only lasted a year before they sold it to William and Spartacus Delia of New Hartford. Uh, and they said that they planned to turn the park to its former glory, hoping to draw tourists to the area. So this is an image of Sacandaga Park in its former glory. And it's probably one of my favorite historic images of in Fulton County of all time. I just love um, how the girl happens to look back at the exact moment they're taking the photo. And I also love pointing out the clothing in this image. They're going to a park. I think modern day for us would be like an amusement park. There are rides and games and all kinds of stuff. And look how they're dressed. They're still dressed to the nines in their, um, their best clothing and out to have a good time. So I just love that, that image. Um, this is the Sacandaga Golf Course, which uh, outlasted the creation of the reservoir. I believe that's the clubhouse in the background there. Um, that is the clubhouse close up on the left. And then I love this photo. It was in our collection and it was simply labeled Golf Pro and His Wife. So I wanted to include that uh, as somebody who would be coming to the region Um for vacation to play golf. So I just liked that, that image. I thought that was nice. Uh, the citizens of Northampton organized the Sacandaga Park Civic Association in 1954. And this is one of the houses that was in the Sacandaga Park. Um, Herman J. Steinberg was elected the first president and the aim of the association was to further promote the Sacandaga Park as a Fulton County recreational and residential area. 
Other goals included initiating projects that enhanced property values, promoting friendship among residents, and acting as a clearinghouse for grievances and commendations concerning park necessities and requirements. Um, it wasn't until August 1968 that the name of the reservoir was officially changed to the Great Sacandaga Lake. The process for the renaming began several years before. Uh, it was led by the late George L. Peck of Gloversville. Uh, in his editor's column in the Leader Herald on March 15, 1968, William H. Evans noted, Ironically, perhaps, the bills calling for the renaming of the reservoir have been guided through the legislature by three Republican lawmakers. George was probably the number one Democrat in Fulton County during the waning years of his abbreviated life and was chairman of the county committee. Uh, one of Peck's reasons for promoting the name change was that people in metropolitan areas are accustomed to a reservoir being a fenced in area where the public isn't allowed to go. Um, in order to draw more tourists from out of town, the change was necessary. The Fulton County Board of Supervisors adopted a resolution for the change and a renaming ceremony was held on August 29th at the Sacandaga Boat Club. This is an image um, from the newspaper reporting at the time. I apologize, it's not the best image. Um, it was scanned in microfilm, and I tried to lighten it up as much as possible. But there is a list of everybody uh, who is in the photo. They were the folks involved in the name change. And right in the middle is George Peck's mother, which I thought was really lovely that they included her in the ceremony. Uh, after the official renaming ceremony, the boat club held a water skiing show, and the Trinity Cadets Drum and Bugle Corps had an exhibition. Uh, the program concluded with a dance at the club, and so the Sacandaga Reservoir became the Great Sacandaga Lake nearly 40 years after its creation. The desire for increased opportunities for recreation, tourism, and a boost to the local economy was also met with concern by year-round residents and a hard-fought attempt to keep too much development away from the lake. And many times, the people who were pushing for increased opportunities, but also trying to um, maintain the character of the area, were the same people. They wanted these increased tourism opportunities, but they also wanted to be sure that um, they were protecting their home, right? So uh, in the 1970s, there was a slew of concerns about land use and development. Uh, there was an in a need for increased public beaches, boat ramps, and other access to the lake uh, to allow non-residents to take to have access um, because a lot of you can't get to the lake through private beachfront property. Uh, but a conversation of sea, uh, I'm sorry, a conversion to seasonal to year-round dwellings was causing concern in the town of Mayfield because the most important seasonal locations were cr clustered uh, in the Paradise Point Cranberry Creek area and the Priddle Vandenberg Point areas. And reporting on these concerns, the leader Harold wrote, the attraction for the seasonal use dwellings of Mayfield is the recreational potential provided by the well-developed shoreline of the Great Sacandaga Lake. It has been estimated that more than 90% of Mayfield's seasonal dwellings are located within one quarter mile of the Sacandaga Lake. So converting these seasonal into um, permanent dwellings, uh, year-round dwellings, would have detracted from the tourism opportunity there. Um, Broad Alban was dealing with the threat of further strip development along its existing roads, and that strip development had already started to characterize the remainder of the town's growth at that time. Uh, the paper reported, Finally, antagonism between permanent and seasonal residents results partly from segregated land use patterns and partly from their conflicting demands on limited resources. Greater polarization may develop if a greater understanding of the interdependent relationships between groups is not better understood and dealt with. Um, so there was some butting, butting of heads going on there. Uh, the Sacandaga Park Civic Association continued to deal with similar issues throughout the decade. Uh, there were requests for increased sheriff patrols in the park on the weekends submitted to the Fulton County Board of Supervisors due to, quote, an influx of young people into the park area on weekends. 
uh, Donald Singer, who was president of the Civic Association at the time, quote, noted that there was an ever-present fear among summer residents of the park that a disruption may occur and private property might be destroyed. Um, the increased visitation also caused issues with parking uh, because cars were left along Route 30, which was dangerous, and then parking inside the Sacandaga Park, which has very narrow roads. If you have ever driven through there, um, you know <laughs> it can be a tight squeeze. Um, the issue, though, was rather this was a county problem or a town problem. Uh, and Town of Caroga Supervisor Emma Kraus pointed out that the Town of Caroga, which was also a resort area, um, had its own trouble areas and that the town was responsible for paying for additional police. She said it must be expected that resort areas such as Caroga Lake and Sacandaga Lake must face the problems created by the influx of summer residents and the young people. Uh, there was also a question of legality. Could the county assign deputies to special assignments when other towns supplied their own police protection? Um, the Civic Association argued that even summer residents paid taxes and few got few benefits from paying those county taxes. So there was sort of this struggle with a bit of infrastructure and how do we handle now this influx of people that we want here to help boost our economy, but how do we uh, manage to maintain everything <laughs> in balance? So eventually the town board of Northampton did appropriate an additional $230 to place another deputy sheriff on patrol in the park on weekends through Labor Day. Um, and today, the Sacandaga continues to draw tourists and locals alike all year round. Um, I love this. I found this article while researching for this presentation. Uh, three compete in 1975 motorized bar stool race. Uh, and they, <laughs> you could see that three, the people who won uh, represented three different uh, businesses in the area, um, Pine Lodge. Purdy's Bar and Grill, and um, what was the other one? Um, Tamarack Tavern. Uh, so that is, you know, trying to come up with different ideas to draw people to the area. We still do that. Um, to, and, you know, we, we draw people in, locals and people from out of town all year round. Um, on Labor Day weekend, we have the Ring of Fire, which marks the end of the summer season. Uh, but the fall and winter bring other opportunities for fun as well on the Great Sacandaga Lake. So we're still, it's still one of our major uh, tourist destinations in Fulton County uh, and still draws people in from all over the place to come and visit. Um, I worked in Albany, as David mentioned, for several years. And I can't tell you how many people I met who told me they had camps on the Sacandaga. And it just, I just, I mean, I knew that tourists visited the area, but it just kind of blew my mind. Like, you know where the Sacandaga Lake is? So uh, I thought that was um, kind of interesting that a lot of them did have camps there. Uh, so I just want to say thank you. This is the end of my official uh, presentation. I have heard the chat going off, so I'm assuming there may be questions. Um, I wanted to have an excuse to put this photo in here of the bears at Sacandaga Park. It was before the time period we were looking at, but um, I just love that <laughs> photo. Uh, you can find us online on our website at FultonCountyHistoricalSociety.org or on our Facebook page, which is uh, Fulton Co. Museum, or if you search Fulton County Museum. Uh, we do, we are not opening regularly this year because of issues with uh, and concerns with the coronavirus, um, but I am able to take perhaps, you know, if you want to come by appointment, one or two folks that might be able to be arranged, and we are doing a lot of virtual programming.